You know, it's really very amazing that you can not only charge a battery just from the sun's rays, but you can also run 110 volt small appliances and 110 volt lighting off a 12 volt battery. Let's see how. Hi and welcome back. So this will be part 10 of restoring the 1967 Sarah Sky. So I did a part 10 that I never posted because it was on wiring for the AC, the 110 volt uh, shore power. Uh, and it ended up being a 40 minute video and I know he's going to watch it anyway. Uh, it's too long, too boring, and so we scrapped that. So I'm going to give you a summary real quick. And then we're going to talk about solar. Um, I am in the process of installing the solar right now. So hang on, I'll show you what I've done. So here's the breaker panel. There are four circuits. Uh, one is for just the air conditioner, one is for just the refrigerator, and one sconce. The other is two outlets and the other sconce. And then the fourth one is uh, over where the sink and cooktop will be uh, on the other side of the camper. I had an awful time getting parts, but uh, I got enough to get by the sconces I'm talking about and then on each end by the sconce there is an outlet and that's a switch for the sconce other end has the same thing uh, hold on but this outlet actually has USB charging ports and then there's that sconce so I had an awful time finding electronic electronical components the boxes mainly so I ended up using the boxes that conduit is run in and all the wiring is just uh, stranded wire and conduit. Uh, I just couldn't find the boxes to use Romex. So that's what I did. Anyway that worked out. So now we're on to solar. Now for basic solar there's three components. The solar panels, the charge controller which is here, and the batteries which will be down there. Okay, that's all it takes for solar if you want 12 volt. We're going to have 110 volt solar. How do we do that? Well, with an inverter. This is the inverter. It's a 1000 watt inverter. You want a pure sine wave inverter because it's crucial for charging electronic things like laptops, cell phones, uh, you know, tablets. If it's not a pure sine wave inverter, it can damage your electronics. So make sure you get a pure sine wave inverter. This is a thousand watt, which should handle the lights and the refrigerator with no problem. You can get higher wattage. The higher the wattage, the more you pay. All right, so there's the solar panel sitting on the roof. Just sitting there, not bolted or anything yet. And it looks like the brackets worked out just right. Okay, so the solar's almost finished. The panels are mounted. Uh, they sell these little connectors to connect more than one panel parallel. So the the positive from uh, each is, is plugged in here, and the negative from each is plugged in here. And that gets you down to just the two wires, which is what I'm waiting on. It's out for delivery. It should be here shortly. I've got two more wires coming that will plug into these and go in through the wall and tie to the charge controller. That's the last step. So I'll take you inside and show you what we have. Okay, so as I mentioned before... There's really three basic components to solar. Your solar panels, your charge controller, and the batteries, which are down there. And in this case, it's two 12-volt lithiums. Uh, and that's all there is to solar if you want to run 12-volt. We want to run 110-volt. So, 
from the batteries up to here there's a, a positive and a negative wire that runs this inverter and this inverter puts out 110 volts now that's all you need to do if you want 110 volts and you want to plug everything into the inverter we want to step further than that so this plugs into the inverter and comes to this AB switch um, and with the way this is wired if it's in on the zero there's no power to anything if it's on the one it's shore power if it's on the two it's solar power it never can be on both that's law uh, the charge controller you can see is powered up because it's hooked to the batteries um, from this AB switch the you know, power either comes from the inverter through this switch and up to the breaker panel which supplies the 110 volts to all the outlets it'll be you know to the refrigerator which obviously is plugged into an outlet and to the sconces if you flip it the other direction so you're on the one position then it disconnects the inverter so it's not even in the picture and it's running directly uh, power from that's the back side of the inlet uh, where you plug in your shore power and it comes through the switch and then back to the breaker panel uh, there's the inverter on if you want to see the fancy lights so we right now wouldn't have any solar though because we're on number one you know, just to show you um, so it does nothing because I don't have shore power plugged in but if we go over here to number two and now we're running on solar Now, we're really not running on solar, we're running on battery, because I don't have that wire. Uh, the inverter will run off a battery, and um, it'll give you 110 volts for a while. But you need the solar panels hooked through the charge controller to the batteries to keep the batteries charged up. So, right now, we have battery power. Uh, we have 110 volts through the inverter. Uh, I've already checked the outlets. They all work. So we've got 110 volts off the battery. We just got to get those wires on the uh, solar panels so that the solar panels will keep the batteries charged. So hopefully they'll be here in the next 10-15 minutes. But my luck they won't. As soon as they get here, I'm putting them in. See you then. So let's have some lunch while we wait. Okay, so the cables finally got here. They've got the male and female for the negative and positive. That just needs plugged into those uh, connectors I showed you. And then it came with connectors for the other end. It, you can cut it to length and put the other end on. But we don't need that. We're just going to strip the other ends and put those right into the charge controller. So I got to drill holes to run these and I'll be back. Okay, now when I'm all done, I'll silicone these holes. Uh, and, and these connectors are waterproof. But just for neatness, it wouldn't matter as far as weather, but just for neatness, when I, after I get these all plugged together, I'm going to tuck them back under the solar panels out of sight. So, uh, and I didn't plug this one in yet as the positive. I'm going to wait till it's connected to the charge controller. It's cloudy, but these panels are still producing some. So I want to go ahead and tie the wires to the charge controller, and then I'll plug this in. So let's go do that. Okay, so those are connected to the solar panel part. And the solar panel, I mean the... Uh, charge controller see the little moon it still thinks it's dark out because that other cord isn't plugged in yet we're not gonna plug it in okay it's plugged in and the holes are siliconed 
and even though that's white that is clear silicone and it will dry clear so let's go inside and take a look at the charge controller so as you can see it's like seven o'clock in the evening in ohio and it has become totally overcast but i'll bet we're still getting some charge let's go see yep see the little moon that was there is gone and the little arrow is saying solar panels are putting into the battery the little smiley face tells you the battery's happy um the batteries are at 14.2 volts um yeah i gotta go through the book and see what all this is but uh this is also a battery scale so um And the operating temperature, it's in Celsius, and I think I can set that to go to Fahrenheit. Oh, come on, focus. There we go. Uh, see, it's operating at 27.3 degrees Celsius. So anyway, uh, the, the inverter works. The solar panels work. The charge controller works. We buttoned up the uh, breaker panel. Uh, I think that's about it. So, you can do this. It's not that difficult. The solar panels get wired to a charge controller. The charge controller gets wired to the batteries. The batteries get wired to the inverter. And the inverter gets wired indirectly through this switch to the breaker panel. I will put links in the description to all these parts. But there's a... A million uh, varieties and it doesn't have to be just what I use. I think this combination worked out pretty good though. So anyway, you can put solar on your RV as well. Uh, thanks for watching the videos. I hope I didn't bore you too bad and uh, hit a thumbs up and subscribe and come back. You'll get notifications um, and you can follow the rest of this Restoration of a 1967 Ciro Scotty through completion. I'll see you next video.